what if I told you that you could build a circuit with, with no parts cost? You could build your circuit with no soldering. And once built, you could test your circuit without a voltmeter, without a current meter, without an oscilloscope. That's what the SPICE program allows you to do. Now SPICE stands for Simulation Program Integrated Circuit Emphasis. And SPICE allows you to build your circuit on a computer using a schematic capture system. And you can test your circuit and once you've proven that it works, you can go ahead and build it. Now SPICE was originally developed at the University of California at Berkeley many, many, many decades ago. And there are many industrial versions of SPICE that cost many thousands of dollars. But there's also a free version of SPICE called LT SPICE. And I want to present that today. LT SPICE. Now that's a free program. You can download it from the internet and use it on your Windows computer. So I want to analyze a very simple circuit using LT SPICE. I'm going to analyze a resistor connected to a capacitor where the bottom plate is tied to ground. And I'm going to set my resistor value at 1000 ohms, 1k ohms. I'm going to set my capacitor value at 100 picofarads. And I'm going to supply an input that changes very rapidly. And it starts at 0 volts and transitions to 1 volt. And then it remains at 1 volt. And I want to look at the output voltage using LT SPICE. Now recall from previous videos that the output will have a slow rise time. And it will reach 1 volt eventually, but it'll take a while. And at point, point 0.693 times RC, it'll reach the halfway point, or about a half a volt. And at one full time constant, which is R times C, which would be in this case 1K times 100 picofarads, which would be 100 nanoseconds. In 100 nanoseconds, the level should reach about 63.2% of the final value. So let's go put this on LT SPICE and see how this works. Here I've loaded the LT SPICE program. And one of the first things I want to do is I want to create a new schematic. And it has a bunch of icons at the top here. A bunch of commands that I can execute by clicking on these icons. So I'm going to click on this one at the far left that says New Schematic. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to grab a resistor. And I want to rotate that resistor. There's a rotate command here. And so let's place this resistor in our schematic. And let's now grab a capacitor. And let's put the capacitor over here. Now I want to grab a voltage source. So there's a component icon that I can select here. And I can scroll over here where it says voltage. And let's grab this device. Let's select OK. And we'll place our voltage source over here. And I'm going to need a ground connection. So let me grab that here. Place another ground connection over here. 
Now I want to connect things up. So there's a, a wire tool. So let's grab that. Let's connect our ground to our voltage source. Connect our voltage source over to our resistor. And connect our resistor to the capacitor. And connect the bottom plate of the capacitor to ground. Now I want to set my resistor to 1,000 ohms. So let's right-click on the resistor. This menu pops up, and I can specify 1K from my resistor value. And select OK, and you see it appear on my schematic. So let's do the same for the capacitor. We'll right-click on the capacitor, and in this box, we'll set the value to 100 picofarads, or PF, and select OK. And now I want to give my voltage source some values. Let's right-click on that. I'm going to select Advanced. And there's a thing here called Piecewise Linear, PWL. And I want to select that. And at time zero of my simulation, time zero, I want to have my voltage at zero volts. I'm going to put a zero here. And one-tenth of a nanosecond later, 0.1 nanoseconds later, I want that voltage to be at one volt. So I'm going to put a one there. And I'm going to select OK. So you can see that the piecewise linear it says at zero time, the start of my simulation, I'm going to have zero volts. A tenth of a nanosecond later, I'm going to have one volt. So let's see, there's a drag command here. Let's select this part of the schematic and kind of move it over a little bit so it looks a little cleaner. Okay, so I'm almost ready to simulate, but I want to put some node names. I want to label some nodes. So I'm going to call the OUT. I'm going to call this node out. And this other node, I'm going to call it in. So this is my in node. And now I'm ready to simulate the circuit. So to do that, there's a little run icon. There's a little man that's running. So let's select that. And so this menu pops up. I want to do a transient simulation. That means I want to look at the time response when I give it this voltage input. So it asks me a series of questions. It says stop time. Well, let's run it for 200 nanoseconds. I have a 100 nanosecond time constant. So 200 nanoseconds should be good enough. Time to start saving data. Well, I want to save all my data. So I'll say time zero. Maximum time step. This is a measure of the accuracy of the program. In what time interval does it do the calculations? I want to set a maximum time interval for, let's say, 0.01 nanoseconds. That's very fine resolution. That should give me very good results. And a program may make that smaller if it needs to. So I'm going to select OK. And up pops this simulation window. So now I can, with this little probe, I can click on the out node. Or let me click on the in node first. So with this little probe, I'll click on the in node. And you can see it. it you can see it in green. And up here it's labeled VN. Now I'm going to click on my output node with this little probe and see what it's doing. And there it is in blue. So we decided that at 0.693 time constants, or 69.3 nanoseconds, it should be at the halfway amplitude point at the output. So let's see if we can find, this would be about 70 nanoseconds. So around about this time here, it should be 
halfway up or at about half a volt and that seems to be about right and at one time constant which is a hundred nanoseconds it should be about 63 percent of the way up so at 100 nanoseconds that looks like about 63 percent so it looks like the simulation program is giving the expected results.